I'm Roger Peterson. I am the Arthur and Ruth Sloan Professor of Political Science. I'm also a member of uh, Center for National Studies and the Security Studies Program here. A lot of the original research I was doing was on the nature of communities and how they form the building blocks of violence for at, at, at higher levels. And got into the Civil War, and I got into, um, at the time, the big uh, fad in political science was rational choice theory or the importation of economic models. I didn't see rational economic behavior driving a lot of my actors. They got in through social norms, that they had some obligations to other family members or, or, or community members. And the other thing I got exposed to were emotions involved with violence. And so the first book I wrote, the Resistance and Rebellion book, um, was more about social norms. The next book I wrote, Understanding Ethnic Violence, Fear, Hatred, Resentment in 20th Century Eastern Europe, was about emotions. Uh, the first book was more to, the puzzle was how did this small people, Lithuanians, maintain resistance against the Soviet Union, a, a giant power, uh, for many years. In fact, they maintained resistance up until the late 40s in a lot of communities. Second book was why do bigger peoples beat up on smaller peoples more? And a lot of that is driven by emotions. And um, uh, that was sort of a historically sweeping book connected to the demography of Eastern Europe. Um, uh, how did all these states in Eastern Europe become homogenized? What drove that? What were sort of the emotional forces which drive majorities to become dominant? And I, one of the ideas is this emotion of resentment, the feeling that you are unfairly in a, uh, placed in a uh, hierarchy, an ethnic hierarchy, and your group deserves to have a different place, and that this, the emotion of resentment that comes from that drives a lot of, uh, of, of action, a lot of violence in Eastern Europe. In the last book that I wrote, Western Intervention in the Balkans, The Strategic Use of Emotion in Conflict, the puzzle there is the Western powers come into a place like the former Yugoslav countries that collapsed, especially Kosovo and Bosnia, and they think they're going to arrange uh, sticks and carrots in a way to, to drive the society one direction. Well, that doesn't always work because the elites of the opposing the Western intervention can use uh, emotions in a strategic way to, to basically mess up the program of the uh, Western powers. And so I spent about 10 years on and off in former Yugoslavia, the primary case being Kosovo, studying this sort of battle of um, emotions versus the sticks and carrots and how that played out and, and prevented certain types of outcomes. Uh, the current work I'm doing is um, in Iraq. I worked in Eastern Europe for 20 years. I didn't think there was going to be much more violence in Eastern Europe. Had I known Ukraine would explode, I might not have chosen the way I went. But the Middle East is going to provide uh, grist for my mill, unfortunately, for the uh, foreseeable future. And so along with two of the former graduate students who were at the Security Studies program here, John Lindsay, who's now at the Monk School of Toronto, and Austin Long, who's at Columbia University, uh, I'm writing uh, uh, another book entitled um, Social Science Guide to Iraq War. And the idea here is we got into Iraq, we're going to build a new type of state. Uh, that state never came about, even after all the, the billions, hundreds of billions of dollars spent there and all the lives lost. Never formed a state, and a lot of this had to do with the failure to establish security. And so again, it's, it's a basic security kind of question, but related to the failure of state building in Iraq. And again, I look at sort of the interplay of rational choice mechanisms uh, with uh, emotions, norms, other types of psychological features, and how these different types of forces can combine and sequence to, to pr produce some of the outcomes we see.